Thank you, Jochavaur. Boreda, good morning. So, when I spoke at the first Celtic Knot conference in Edinburgh, uh, I started my talk with a little bit of Welsh history, kind of looking at how the language has survived against the odds and everything that we've been through, um, and the fact that the language has survived despite that. So today I want to have a quick look at history again, um, but I want to think about what it was that helped the language to survive, um, and consider how we can use Wikipedia to safeguard the language um, in the digital age. So, after the medieval period, Europe entered a renaissance, a cultural revolution. People began to study and celebrate art, architecture, politics, science, and literature. And the advent of the Gutenberg printing press meant that information could be shared cheaply with the masses via a little thing called the book. Suddenly, regular people could access a wealth of information from history to religion and science in their homes. And I think it's fair to draw a comparison between the advent of the modern printing press um, and the advent of the internet. Both drastically increased access to information. And if we look closely at this painting, imagine all those books and papers that they're, they're staring at were screens, phones, laptops, tablets. It, it could be, apart from the clothes, it could be a scene from any kind of modern university. Um, the problem with the book, though, is that it can only be enjoyed if you speak the language it's written in. And as humans, it's in our nature to be curious. We want to learn and find the answers to questions, whether it be the origins of life or we want to know more about a cast member from Game of Thrones. So we learn the languages that we can get that information in, the languages that can give us the answers. And the more we use that language, the more we favor it over our own native language, and the less value we place on teaching our language to our children. So countries all over Europe began translating and producing books in their own languages. Wales was a deeply Christian nation, and perhaps the most important text for a lot of people was the Bible. But apart from a privileged few who spoke English or Latin, no one could access this information in Welsh. Then in 1588, the Bible was translated into Welsh, and many historians credit this work as having saved the Welsh language. Certainly, the language would not be as nearly widely used today um, without this, this translation and translations like it. In the years and decades and centuries that followed this translation, there was a big rise in the number of Welsh-speaking clergymen, academics, historians, teachers. Welsh language books, journals and newspapers became widespread, all thanks to the printing press. In 1731, a series of Welsh language circulating schools were set up uh, by Griffith Jones to teach the scriptures in Welsh. But in the process, Wales became one of the most literate nations in the world. So creating the content people wanted and needed in their language allowed that language to thrive. And this is what we're trying to do with Wikipedia. So in the digital age, it's not too far-fetched to imagine Wikipedia as that crucial element which allows the language to continue to live on in day-to-day -day life. So what was the driving force behind this explosion of Welsh language press? It was thanks in no small part to the backing of societies, of businesses, of publishers, and in the case of the Welsh Bible, even the English monarchy. And without this kind of support or involvement, we'd have just a fraction of Welsh language literature that we have today, and the language would be all the worse for it. So how can we encourage the same kind of backing for Wikipedia? And not just in Wales, in any area where there's a minority language community that needs access to information in their language. So in Wales, we've made some pretty big steps, I think, in the last five or ten years um, in the right direction. And in the last five years, the National Library of Wales has been right at the heart of this work. So 
7,231 Welsh language articles, at last count, um, were created at National Library of Wales events uh, by our volunteers in the National Library and as part of Welsh Government funded projects. Thousands more articles have been improved at these events and thousands more have been contributed by the people that attended these events outside of organised sessions. So these events are fantastic for growing capacity, inspiring new editors and improving Welsh language content. But sometimes in order to put on a good event, we have to work with other institutions. And we've worked with universities, archives, the BBC, Welsh music magazines, mental health charities, um, even the Welsh Rugby Union. And without this kind of support of these umbrella organisations to draw people in and, and provide a venue, funding, whatever it is, it's really hard to get the kind of level of engagement that we need for these events. And we've shared nearly 20,000 digital images from our archives at the National Library in order to illustrate and enrich Wikipedia articles. But we've also been sharing our data openly, making metadata from our collections available in Welsh for the first time through Wikidata using the multilingual labels. And this is helping to cement Welsh's position as a digital language, not simply an analogue or a language that is just spoken. And I think this is crucial if Welsh is going to flourish um, and survive the digital revolution. We've tried to offer help to other organisations as well who are willing to share openly but perhaps don't have the expertise to do so. So, for example, we helped CADU create open Wikidata for every listed building in Wales. And we worked with SILIP to share information on every library in Wales. Now, early on in our work with Wiki, we realised that probably the very best way of building capacity and getting more Welsh-speaking editors um, was through education. And in tapping into the education sector, I think, I think this is the most, probably the most important element of a kind of Wiki nation which is really the idea of contributing, uh, making it normal to, to have this idea of contributing openly for the good of all. So we tried to get Wiki on the syllabus through the Welsh Baccalaureate, um, but we failed miserably. The, our application was kind of met with confusion, uh, misunderstanding, but luckily, Mentor the Eighth Morn gave it another go about a year later, and they were successful. Um, and I'm not going to say too much about Aaron's work because he's talking tomorrow. Um, but I think it's fair to say that we're beginning to see the idea of Wikipedia as a learning tool being taken really seriously now by educators in Wales. And that's down in no small part to the amazing work that Aaron has done with Wikimorn. And we recently worked with them um, on the Wikipobol or Wikipeople project. Um, and we developed an impact report which really highlighted some of the great advantages of using Wikipedia in, in an educational setting. Um, and we're going to be partnering again with Wikimorn very soon um, to document and deliver events in schools as part of the Wiki Literature Project. So universities, I think, are probably one of the biggest untapped resources that we have in Wales. So much great work done by students at universities never sees the light of day. And Wikipedia and Wikidata offers a way to share the content and the research that they've worked on with everyone. And it gives them a whole load of digital literacy skills at the same time. So we've made some progress. Robin and Wikimedia UK have overseen um, a residency at Colleg Cymraeg where they were sharing content openly um, online, which could be shared with Wikipedia. But as is often the case with short-term residencies, once that residency finished, things kind of quieten down. Um, so they, that kind of needs restarting again. Um, we've, got, we've had Wikipedia-based assignments trialed at Swansea University and at Aberystwyth University with the translation course. And actually, Wikipedia's translation tool, which they use on that course, has been really popular generally as a way of 
quickly and easily translating content from one language to another. So we're making progress with universities um, and we've done loads of one-off events with them, but Wiki and open access is far from embedded in the thinking of those institutions. So there's, there's definitely a lot more to do. Now I mentioned government funded projects. We've done three, three projects now uh, funded by the Welsh government. And the first project we did was focused on Welsh pop music. Um, and really around this idea that, that Mark was talking about, about documenting some of the small bands in recent history don't have great documentation um, in Welsh. And, and this project was one way of kind of recording some of that knowledge on Wikipedia. And we worked with um, Welsh language magazines, with photographers, with a record label, um, and the BBC, and they all shared content with us for that project. And the second project focused on health-related content. And again, we were able to partner with a number of health charities and organisations um, that shared professionally written content with us for Wikipedia. And with all these projects, we use the growing amount of open data and specifically Welsh language open data to help create stub articles about bans, medical drugs, treatments, conditions, um, and people. But at the heart of the projects was always community outreach, getting new editors to come along and, and give it a go. And the two people you see in the foreground in this image um, our father and daughter, she's a nurse and he's a retired GP. And it was really great to see them both working together in Welsh to, to contribute to, to the Welsh language Wikipedia. And in the time it would take to, to sort of sit in the waiting room and go for a consultation at your local GP surgery, these guys, these guys wrote content that can be viewed by every Welsh speaker in the world. So at Celtic Lot, not last year, the Welsh Minister for Lifelong Learning and the Welsh Language stood in front of us and she praised the value of Wikipedia for education and society and for the language. And just months later, the Welsh Government produced a new strategy document for the digital future of the Welsh language. And it explicitly stated in that document their support for the Welsh language Wikipedia and for improving Welsh content on Wikidata. And for me, in terms of building a wiki nation, support like this from the very top is crucial. And over time, that message of support will filter down through the public sector and through government-funded organisations. And one of the advantages of being a small nation or region is that government, governance and policy can be more agile. It can adapt quickly to changes in attitudes and technology. A small government breeds innovation, and I think the government, the Welsh government's response to Wikipedia has really demonstrated that. So we've made inroads in education, in the culture sector, and with local government, but there's still a lot more to do. I don't feel as though we're a wiki nation just yet. So for the rest of the talk, I want to think about um, what we, our organisations, our governments can do to ensure that Wikipedia is able to reach its full potential um, in enabling small languages to thrive. So, open by default. This is a position that we're trying to adapt at the National Library of Wales. But even on that scale, there's lots of challenges to overcome. There is a question whether the current copyright system and law actually makes sense for smaller languages, particularly when it comes to digital content. But even within the current system, if all Welsh content producers took the open approach, open by default approach, by starting with, okay, is there any reason not to share openly? I think very soon we'd have a sort of influx of really valuable material that we could use to enrich Wikipedia, which by the way, is the most viewed website in the Welsh language. So anyone sharing their content openly with us um, will no doubt see an increase in interaction with that content. They'll, they'll shoot up the Google search rankings and their content will be much more accessible. So for publishers and authors, an open by default approach might um, be to publish and promote physical copies of books. 
the traditional way for perhaps five or ten years, after which physical sales are likely to be quite small. And perhaps then would be a good time to allow that work to be reused, to open it up, to, to get added value from it and allow it to be adapted and used on Wikipedia and as an open educational resource. But a lot of content produced in Wales is never intended to be profitable. It's produced as a public service, um, often with funding by the Welsh Government. So if a text, text is never intended to be commercialised, why not increase its value and its impact by removing any barriers to reuse and encouraging others to make use of that content? In my experience, there's a certain amount of nervousness about taking this step. It goes against a very long established norm. And often, even when there's really good will within an organization to share openly, finding people within that organization willing or able to take such a bold step can be really problematic. So I think we need to try and find ways to make it easier for organizations um, to have the confidence to, to share their content openly. We need to find ways to encourage more people to contribute just a little of their time to improving Wikipedia. So working with schools and universities, I think, is, is obviously a great way. You have a captive audience. And perhaps those people will go on to continue editing later in life. We've seen with Wikimorn events in schools, a number of contributors have now contributed to Wikipedia outside of the classroom. And they'll carry that mindset and that knowledge through to, to adulthood. But how can we reach more adults, and women in particular? Whilst we've achieved gender parity in terms of articles on the Welsh Wikipedia, we definitely haven't in terms of editors. And I think the existence of conferences like this um, as a forum to discuss these issues is, is going to be crucial moving forward. We should also not be afraid to piggyback the political mood and harness this to encourage contribution to Wikipedia. So in Wales, there's an increase in support for independence and the language is seeing a resurgence. And Wikipedia can be used to share knowledge of Welsh culture and history, to highlight its unique cultural identity, separate to that of England, Ireland or Scotland. And it can be used to demonstrate that the language is alive, healthy and vibrant. So for activists and supporters of independence, for language or nationalism, contribution to Wikipedia offers an easy way to actively make a visible, positive difference. And I think Catalonia and others have had some success in this area, kind of using Wiki to help enrich and inform the record of their unique cultural identity. As long as these activities don't threaten the neutrality of our Wikipedia, I think it's definitely worth pursuing. So, also, I think we shouldn't be afraid to be copycats. <laughs> um, Catalonia, the Basque Country and others have found a way to make a success of their Wikipedia through libraries, through education, um, and they've built some really strong editor communities. <coughs> so I think it makes sense to look at where they've succeeded and the lessons they've learned um, and apply those in our own areas to, to make our Wikipedia and our communities stronger. And that for me is what's great about this conference. We can, we can all learn something from each other and, and take that knowledge and, and apply it to our own language. So finally, National Library of Wales and Menter Morn are currently the only two organisations in Wales really investing in working with Wikimedia. And if we look at what those two organizations alone have achieved in the last few years in terms of an increase in content, engagement with new editors, and then imagine a country where every library, museum, university, college, school, society, community group, just naturally thought about how they could contribute to open knowledge in Welsh. Think about what we could achieve then. So government backing, more wiki in education, more open access, tapping into passionate and knowledgeable communities, and even copying others 
I think these are the building blocks of a wiki nation. Just as the printed word saved the Welsh language in the past, the strength of Welsh in the digital sphere will shape its future as a language. And in this digital sphere, I think Wikipedia is our biggest ally. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Jason. Um, so we're already ahead of schedule. That's unusual in Cornwall. Um, so next, has anybody got any questions just from those really introductory talks at, um, at the moment? Okay, uh, that's fine. So we've got coffee, a coffee break next, and after, after that we've got some more sort of practical detailed sessions uh, on use, use of Wikipedia um, and, and Wikidata. Oh, yep. Sort of questions. Oh, right. was, it, was Wayne Jason mentioned the, 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 the loss of Welsh music? Yeah. Uh, I was interested in kind of the size of the bands, you know, being familiar with people like Gorky's like Alec Monkey and Kalarama, that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm wondering what, what we're talking about when we say losing kind of Welsh music. That was... So there's a massive gra grassroots yeah. scene in Wales with music, and yeah. a lot of the smaller bands, they never get signed. Um, and there's very little sort of written or documented about them and often they'll only be a band for a couple of years and then they'll disband you know and they'll go off to university or whatever so it's, it's trying to record some of that grassroots knowledge as a, one of the sort of areas that we looked at and that's the very thing that came up at so Luenda Peronich uh, September is a music fest music dance festival but they have a session a symposium on music research and they had several speakers on the same day all making similar points that bands break up then somebody goes on to form something else and you know the speakers came to give their talks but actually ended up talking about those connections but it was all in that session and then they were saying well we keep having these discussions but it gets lost and then somebody else talked about um, their record collection and you know everybody got very emotional when they saw these old records that looked familiar to them. Again, you know, unless you were in that room, you just didn't see that. And it's such an easy thing to, to publish through Wikipedia um, at no cost, really. So, um, and I think it's such an engage, you know, that's something that most people can easily engage with and really get a lot out of. So, um, so yeah, we're hoping to basically do some copycatting. Yeah, yeah. So, take your point. Yes, five. Yeah, I, really, I wanted to, um, I'm not sure that we have time, really, but I wanted to explore the whole idea of um, open content, and I'm, I, obviously I'm a publisher, and the whole idea of copyright is, is, is very fraught, and, and, you know, this is it's obviously not something that perhaps you can talk about over coffee, but it, it, it's, it is a very difficult situation. Like if I publish something, particularly an anthology, then well, what do I do to persuade the contributors um, who might be very reluctant. Um, I mean, is there a strategy that you have for um, pursuing open content? Yeah, yes or no? There is a very <laughs> strategy, yeah. We're, just, we're still trying to, to learn and find the best way of um, convincing people that it's the right thing to do, basically. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, we, we usually just tell them that if they, if they publish their stuff somewhere else, you know, they, they get maybe a couple of hundred people seeing it and they publish it on Wikipedia and they get millions, if not billions of pages. So um, usually that's, that's a kind of a, a convincing argument for a lot of authors who want to see their work published. I mean, it doesn't make them money. Uh, well, that's, that's the key, isn't it? You know, but that, <laughs> you know, that's very often not the thing. You know, people, a lot of people actually want a recognition for the work that they've done, not, not to try and make a fortune out of it. Um, as a publisher, you may disagree with me, of course. But no, uh, I, I would say that 95% of authors that I deal with are, are, would like to see their, like to their, 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 their work in, in the public domain. But um, it's the intractable 5%, some of whom are kind of well known, who, uh, you know, for whom cash or recognition 
of yeah. the folding stuff is actually really helpful. Yeah, well, people really can important. earn a living, yeah, I understand yeah. that. But at, at the end of the day, um, you've got to start somewhere. Indeed. And, uh, you know, until you're famous, you're probably not going to make much money out of your, your artistic endeavours. And having a bigger audience is a, is a big step on the way. It's a, it's a good selling point. And it's exactly the same selling point that we use in education. Uh, you know, if you've got a, a, a student with a, who does an assignment, and they write this wonderful essay and it disappears into a filing cabinet in the school and, and it's never seen again until it's thrown out. Um, that's what a waste. Um, and yet if they, if they can publish that somewhere on, on, on the Wikipedia or use it to contribute to Wikipedia, that goes down, that's going to be there forever. You know, we've got a commitment to have Wikipedia and its servers running until the heat death of the universe. You know, that, that is our intention, that it will be there. And so it's, it's from now on in. And uh, that's the selling point. That, that's, that's the argument that you use to twist people's eyes. To say, yeah, publish it open. Publish it open because there's no point in publishing it. Really isn't. Those days are gone. <laughs> Until <laughs> tell that to the, yeah. to the inheritor of no, R.S. Thomas at that stage. Yeah, I think it's, it's obviously a big issue for not just minority languages. It is, that's, that's a, that's, you know, the world is changing very quickly and, and all sorts of business models are being upturned. Um, and that, has particular impacts for small languages. In a way, we're the other way around, where we have no commercial or very few commercial opportunities, but actually increasing public opportunities. And um, but it's certainly something where we we have a lot of people that feel very frustrated that their work has no, you know, is used repeatedly, but they get no reward. Um, and and the demands on them are, are increasing all the time. So. It is. It, there's all sorts of uh, sensitivities there that um, are really difficult to tease out. Yeah. I've got a question for you. All right. Um, why did you manage to get through two introductory sessions without once mentioning yep. the website Cornish Wikipedia? Ah, well. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not... out of my phone now. Yeah. I had to check on my phone if it actually existed a minute ago. Just yeah. Sure well. Um, so, yes, it exists, and I did, I did talk about that last year, at last year's conference, but for, for me, the, the purpose of these two days is, I mean, I could show you our, our, our you know, the, the Kinemic Wikipedia site, but for, for me, the benefit is actually, you know, what can we be doing, and how can we look at the things that we're not doing, and, and learn from you, and learn, you know, we can sort of, we've got the sessions with Vicky, in the afternoons to, to sort of look at developing that. We really want to sort of look at, okay, what are we not doing really? And where can we, how can we take that forward? We know it's, you know, it's a small site, but um, we're interested in how we grow that. So. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's, that's, maybe that would be one of the things that we, yeah. we might talk about. Absolutely. And we've also got um, the unconferenced sections yeah. tomorrow. So we are, we are I, I, we're sorting out a space to stick people's ideas on. So... Uh, so anything like this copyright issue or anything that you want to carry on for discussion tomorrow afternoon, by the end of the coffee break, there will be a space for when you come back. It may be on the window or something out there, but we'll we'll sort out a space so you can have some time tomorrow, tomorrow yeah, afternoon to look at that. So this, the seminar rooms are uh, so are there for any any breakout discussions that you want to have as well. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And I... Uh, the thing I forgot to mention in my uh, talk was I mentioned about the project with Bangor University on our dictionary. Uh, David Trithuri is here, who's, uh, who's been working in the office on our side to help make that happen. He's going to be talking on the, the, the technical side about how, how that came about and the work behind that and, and different tools he's used. So that will be tomorrow. Um, so yes, do go for coffee now. Uh, we'll be back, back in half an hour. The coffee breaks... This one is quite a long one, it's half an hour, but it is intended that we do have those discussions, so uh, do engage and have a go. All right, see you back in half an hour. All right. Did you do it? Yes. Yes, all right.
all right, kids. I, I was wondering, do you 